Thanks for joining us today. Oh, sorry Seriously? about that. Sorry about that. We're post-COVID. Thanks for tuning in with us today. Our prayers still go out with my co-host, Leo, um, who uh, had a tragic accident in his family. A hopeful recovery. I brought a what, lifetime partner, girlfriend used to be, oh, now wife. I brought her on today to give her perspective about my passion for Dobermans and animals in general. We first met in 2011, yeah. right? I think our first public date was at LACMA, outdoor jazz thing. Okay, yeah, you, right, you right. met me there, yeah. And she had one of these friends of hers that she rarely talks to, but this friend was there this particular day. Me and her friend was doing more talking than me and her. And she asked me about mm -hmm. dogs and Dobermans, and I said, you know what? I breed Dobermans. She said, you do? What does that mean? And I said, well, two dogs get together and they make babies. <laughs> and you remember Secretariat, the horse? She said, yeah, I saw that movie. I said, when he won the Triple Crown, do you know how much the owner was charging for breeding? She said, no. I said, millions. Now, none of the offsprings ever won anything, but because that dog won a title, I mean, not the dog, the horse, the horse. who bred to the horse, was hoping to get some of that DNA because it's a, he had the X factor. We fast forward to now. She loved cats. Um, I love cats. And initially, animals. right? Right. Initially, I didn't like cats, but my ex-wife had cats and turned me on to them and I thought they was the, one of the best pets you can have, right? We didn't tell me about the cat initially, but when I told you I had one, it, it made things a lot smoother. Yes. Every time we tell people we have cats, they come up with the what? They're allergic. Something's wrong. It's something. Everybody's allergic to cats. And what's, what's, what's oddly enough is that <clears throat> my aunt Talitha, yeah. before she came out here, we, we tell everybody we got cats here. One cat acts like a dog, right? And that's Gigi. Mm -hmm. And I told my aunt about the cat, and my aunt is of that age where she thinks that, that her phone is tapped and people are following her and she see dead people, all this stuff. It's, she starts thinking about stuff a lot, and then she has to have these conversations. She said, oh my God, I'm going to get cat fever. Oh, you didn't read about it? And now she sends me like 10 links about cat fever. Well, when she came out to visit, she comes for like a month, month and a half. She sleeps downstairs in the guest bedroom. And next thing I know in the morning time, guess who's with the cat before I am? She is. I look at cats as one of those felines, one of those animals that demands and earns the affection. You just can't take it. You just can't bribe them with treats. They don't play that. They have to feel comfortable with you. What reservations have you ever had on not telling people you have cats? I needed to see if you like cats. I love animals, period. I love cats, dogs, doesn't matter. I already knew you dealt with dogs or whatever. Didn't have to worry about that. But I didn't know how you felt about cats. Right. So that made me, of course, just not initially just jump out and tell you about cats. Because a lot of times I get from people, especially when I was you know, dating guys or whatsoever, first thing they say, oh, I'm allergic to cats. I don't like cats. And it's not really that they don't like, it's, it's that they don't like them and they don't want to deal with them. They're not allergic, but they tell me they're allergic just as a, an excuse. So I'm like, okay. So I didn't feel like hearing that from you. I was like, okay, well, I already know he likes dogs, but let me see. I'm not going to say something right away about this cat, you know, that I have. But then all of a sudden you started telling me about your cat. And I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, you have cats. You like cats. And that's when I told you about my cat because I was like, you know, you, have, you told me about yours first. And fellas, <laughs> I do like cats, if you know what I'm talking about. We start dating, and of course, everybody knows who knows me about Dobermans is that I look for a specific type of male Doberman as a puppy. He's got to have the intangibles. He's got to have the courage. He's got to have the drive. He's got to have the, the wittiness, the smarts, the ability to learn. And what I don't like is to spend months and months and months and sometimes years on developing something that my first two Dobermans, um, Brody and Alonzo, who trailblazed for me, they set the standard on what my expectations are. If the dogs that I'm getting, I don't care how young and how cute they are, if they're not showing me the intangibles up front, um, I'm going to find a home for that dog. 
And so we, she had to get used to me getting puppies. And after five or six months, I displaced them to a, another another family. So how did you feel about that? But you, but you knowing what I'm looking for, right? I got you, but see, I'm not in that. I'm, I love animals. I used to want to be a veterinarian. Both my, my sister and I used to want to be a veterinarian. She did become a veterinarian. I decided not to go that route. But um, I love animals that much that I just get attached to them. So it's not a business to me. It is, they're my pets and my babies. I don't have children. My cats are my babies. You see Gigi back there. I don't know if you can see her. Yeah, it, it, it didn't make me feel good having to give away the puppy, especially when the first time I had to deal with it was when um, Rody passed. And right. you went on your rampage of puppies, and next thing you know, we had two. We had Dilly that we had from when he was, how old when he came when he was really well, I had little. Dilly when he early, was four, four six weeks. weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. See? Having to kind of raise them. That was my first time actually having to actually raise a dog from when they were that small. You know, I my 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 dog that I grew up with, Duke, was born before me. You know, There's a lot of dogs named Dukes, yeah. So uh, this one having to take care of it from a puppy. I mean, you know, I, I don't have children. <laughs> I understand that. I know I'm not doing a comparison, but they are like children when you have to take care of them like that. And I got attached. You were away at work. I was, it was COVID. It was summertime. I was working from home. So I'm coming down, taking the puppy out, like changing his little, um, little pads and, the, you know, pee pads. pee pads and everything. And it just, it was just, it was just my baby. So, yeah, when you decided that he was not going to stay in the camp and had to give him away, I'm like heartbroken. And then every puppy since then, <laughs> that we had to do that. I'm like, are you kidding me? These are my children. <laughs> hey, but like I said, I said, Alonzo and Brody, my babies away. <laughs> Alonzo and Brody set the tone like this is, this could be a norm, right? And so that's why I, and you got to remember, Dylan was from a breeder that was here in the States. So most of my dogs that I get are from overseas, right? So for me, it's like, I, then I had got Casanova. Okay. And Casanova was younger than Dylan, but Casanova was bullying Dylan. Those are the things that I look for. I'm like, wow, he's letting this big dog bully him, take his food, not act a fool about it. You know, Dobermans, dogs in general, when they're hungry, it's feast or famine, right? So you get to see who is the pack leader in this dog game? And when I was taking him to training, Casanova was doing all the things that I like, chasing the rag, chasing the ball, retrieving, and Dylan wasn't catching on. Big, nice looking dog, wasn't catching on. And I said, you know what? Let me displace him to a, a, a family that has more time for him. So that's when Dogman got him. Dogman turned Dylan up, but I didn't have that kind of time. As a matter of fact, this is my other girl right here. Well, my other this baby, is Gigi. We rescued her from a, a rescue spot where they was going to put the kittens down at some point. Yeah. And my neighbor from Jackson, Mississippi, the Sullivans, Donald Sullivan and Doris, Donald and Doris Sullivan, they were my neighbors. And he was a retired FBI agent. And he was retired when I moved to Jackson. So this man has been retired since, since the day I known him. His, his wife, Doris, was a house mom, right? Homemaker. They called them homemakers. And she had a black cat named Greta. And her legal name is Greta, yes. but we call her Gigi. Yes. And I remember Greta, Miss Sullivan's cat, used to chase dogs off the property. Like, like she was like that alpha cat. And I was like, you know what? I love black cats. It's cool. But be honest with you people, if something happens to either one of these cats, the next cat I'm going to get is an exotic cat. I'm, I want to get one of those um, Savannah cats. Right here in the picture. This is a Savannah cat. They look like miniature um, cheetahs. There's levels to how much wildness in their DNA you can take. Mm. Of course, I don't want the super wild cat because I'm not training cats. I'm not Sigmund and Freud or whatever it's... What is it? What is it? Sigmund and then yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, Sigmund and Freud. I'm I'm not I'm not into that. I just want something nice. But um, I, I love animals. But I love specific animals, right? If you had a choice, what would be? What's your favorite dog? Like your favorite breed? Because I have a bunch of favorite breeds. You know, you know, I love huskies. You know, at some point I'm gonna because have, of the eyes. I want to have a husky at some point 
in my lifetime. I gotta have one. Even though my sister says they're the craziest. Okay, so <laughs> but huskies I know, I love in the summertime in California okay. and burning up. So you just want a dog. I'm gonna with get the blue short eyes. hair one then. Right. I want one. I'm thinking about one of those brown ones. I love those brown and white no. ones, and but I love them both. I just maybe a husky just. You know, you know what I, I really like, and um, I love like Irish setters, Gordon setters, Kangos. My mother used to love Afghan hounds. Of course, I think that was the dog of the '80s because everybody thought they were females in the car, and then they start driving past the car. Oh, it's a dog, right? And um, I, I just generally like large breed dogs, but I do I do like dogs that have a sport type of background, like Labrador retrievers. I love labs that can retrieve in the water. You see now with Greta, what we did, we declawed her because I'm not gonna have a rescue cat just screwing up all my furniture. So we declawed her, her front claws. She got her backs. But her, her cat, you'll never see her cat. Her cat, well, I've seen her cat. But her other cat, she's a scary heifer, right? You, you would never see her. Listen, her cat, her cat. Her cat reminds me of the movie called um, Soul Food. And you know how the old man, <laughs> the grandfather, would never come out the room. You just put the food uh, the food of tray by the door. He comes get it. And when he's done, he throws a tray out. You'll never see. So you'll never see this cat until when it's time to eat. <laughs> Lulu is scared of him and doesn't like him to this day because when I first introduced him to Lulu, he starts petting Lulu like she was a dog. And she's just looking like, what the heck is going on? Why is this man abusing me and hitting me? <laughs> so, it's been a done deal from there. She's like, I don't like him. He's too rough. Women like men to have a little edge. You know, just, it is what it is, right? Cat, a little roughneck. So now we finally get the cats to show you guys and show you what they look like. Because um, you'll always the see the black cat. This is another cat that's scared of humans and food and everything else in the world. <laughs> all right, so we're finna go get it, all right? Now this is good stuff right here. Let she go. let me pedal like a dog, see? How's that for some good be real? You gotta be real if you're gonna do be real. Now, the way she found that cat, she almost killed the cat. She ran, she almost ran over the cat. She's scared. <laughs> Lulu, say hi. She's like, no, what is going on? That's my little scaredy cat right here. Now this cat right here used to ride her, that cat's back as a kitten. <laughs> She's a bully. She, she holds her down in wrestling moves right now. Lulu, you want to relax? Oh, she's she is stressed out. Look, look at her laying on my knee. Look at her. <laughs> she's look at good. Her. That's some real good. Be real. Now she's looking at that cat, and she's jealous of the attention. So if we let them go. She's gonna chase her away. Gigi's made for TV. This one here, she's struggling. All right, let's go. You scared? <laughs> she's so scared. And dude, she may look like she's big, but when she's wet, she's, she's skin fur. and bone. She just all fur. You scared? You scared? Say hi. She's a calico, and all this hair and stuff, man. Yeah, that's what we got to deal with right there. Hair all everywhere. That she used to think I used to come home from seeing some white woman and I was telling her that <laughs> it's not true. This is from the cat, you know, cat hair. Not K-A-T, but C-A-T. Oh, no, no, I was just talking about the dogs. You were asking me before about the what other type of dogs I like. And of yeah. course I want like huskies. But I used to always be a big dog person because I grew up with a big dog. Named Nor Duke. Duke, Norwegian Everybody Elkhorn. named Duke. Yes. Now everybody well, hey. name is Max, but go ahead. Well, I mean, this was back in what? Duke is older than me, so this is talk. We're talking. Except Duke, everybody's older. Duke than you. is probably born in like '69 or something like that, because um, he was before Veronica too. So. Boy, that's a real old dog. Yeah, well, you know, he was our big brother, so he used to protect us. So since I grew up with a big dog like that, I loved big dogs, and I only wanted big dogs. But now I actually 
might be okay with a smaller dog. Mm. You know, I didn't like smaller like what dogs kind of small they, dog? because they were yippy. I don't do it was chihuahuas. Just, yip, yip, yip. No, no, no. But you know what? I've met a. a, a I don't do I've Frenchies. Met a, I met some really good chihuahuas that, that you know. The thing is, my thing is. I, why I didn't like small dogs is they were just really too yippy and just they're just too much for me. And I'm more laid back. I'm the I like the big dogs and just sit back chill and look at you like you stupid. You know what I'm saying? When you when you're acting crazy and the little dogs just be running around just they extra, right? You know, as time has gone by, I'm like I found some nice little small dogs that I actually kind of like and I might be able to deal with. But my luck, I'll get one of the yippy ones. It's just like extra, and then I'll be upset. But my, I mean, I, I guess I still love it. My it favorite it. small dogs. <laughs> I have a couple of small dogs that I like. I like the miniature schnauzers, and I do like cocker spaniels. But if I get one of those small dogs, they have to be girl dogs because they have to be to the point where they dependent on me for emotional support, and they're little. Male dogs, well, all do, all little dogs. Male dogs in general that are intact. They don't know they're little. So now they go out and start and they get toe up. But when you got little female dogs, they're a little bit more nurturing because of the nature, the nature of them. You know, so I, I like, and for men, the female animals are more drawn to us like the male animals are more drawn to the, the female humans. That's what I see. They may not listen to you as much, but they definitely are more... Uh, they're more prone to come to you versus me because they know I correct right? You won't. You'll give them a treat I when do. they do some wrong. Well, no, not I'm when they do wrong. Them. No, I put them, I do what I'm supposed to do. I really thank Stephanie for showing up and doing a cameo for the, um, for this, for this, um, this podcast and hopefully she'll <laughs> come back again and talk about what she does, um, full time. Person, she's a certified personal trainer. Yes, I'm a personal trainer, wellness coach. I've been for some years, yeah. And you, are and a, uh, I am a retirement specialist. So, you know, license. Hey, state license. License. State license with California, but national license with personal training. Yes. Well, I'm. I have. I, I'm licensed in many states when right. it comes to my retirement specialist too. Right. You know, and financial retirement specialist. Look, I keep people financially and physically fit. That's what I do because hey. you know. If we're going to be living longer hey. in retirement, right? You also want to be in good shape and, you know, hey. eat well and everything. So when I when we first started fit. when we first started dating, where we actually started dating. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, I said, "Self, you can't be the only <laughs> sexy person in this relationship." <laughs> right? So, I took You were saying that to yourself or you're saying I can't be the only sexy? I, I, I said it to myself cuz I'm used to but you just said you can't be the only. Sexy you can't be the only sexy me, one. Me, I can't be the only sexy right. one. Oh, so I'm okay. like, so no, I can't be the only. I got to get my together. So you had to get right. together. Yeah, yeah. So I, I want to be a sexy individual too in this relationship, right? So I have to start. And what's so funny about this is that I had started hiring coaches, and I was coming home and said, Stephanie, guess what? This coach told me if I do this, this, and this, and, and know what my my basal metabolic rate is and caloric deficit, I can get shredded. And she said what? That's all the stuff I've been telling you this entire time. He comes home every time with something new that his coach told him. Hey. And he's like, Stephanie, we got to get this product. And I'm like, really? And I go to the cabinet and open it up. And he has no clue that's been in the house this entire time. Like half the stuff that your coach listen. tells you to eat because I've been eating it for listen. 20 plus years. Listen, listen. <laughs> I said, Stephanie, this is recent too. This is another this, recent. The one. most recent one because was the Ezekiel I, I, So I, people don't know. Some people know. Some people don't. I compete in men's physique, right? And my coach gives me a certain diet to eat every day. And he gave me a diet. Said you got to get some Ezekiel bread and do four whole eggs every morning. I said, Steph, we need Ezekiel bread. And guess what? I went to the freezer and got, we got the Ezekiel bread. Two loaves in the freezer. Because we already had it at the house. You see, people? I eat Ezekiel bread. This you is how much he win. pays attention. You can't win. <laughs> this right. is how much he pays attention. If you like the content that you just heard, and I know it's enthralling and it's educational, do a like, comment, and subscribe. And guess what? Forward my YouTube channel to a friend. Go to my website if you're looking for stud service from Champion Dogs. Go right here. The information's at the bottom.